the gas to one pound of water. The blessing to it is that the water provides its own oxygen for combustion, so therefore you eliminate uh, the O2 being extracted out of the air. It became imperative to find a way to how to be able to pull apart the water molecule and do it in a physical manner, not chemical. And so you have to learn how to ask the right scientific questions. And uh, what actually took place that when the, the unlike atoms uh, take on a covalent bonding, under the law of physics, that for a reaction, there's an equal and opposite reaction. No one was asking the question, well, once the unlike atoms come together to form the water molecule, what actually takes place? And what actually occurred was that, in fact, that in the field of physics, in the outer orbit, the L orbit, that normally uh, the oxygen atom by itself has eight electrons and eight protons. But when the unlike atoms of hydrogen is covalently linked up, to the oxygen atom, then the L orbit now accepts up to 10 electrons, and as a result, the oxygen atom swings to a negative electrical charge. Since the hydrogen atom is now shared its negative charge electron, the positive charge of the hydrogen atom now swings positive. Therefore, the water molecule was uh, bipolar electrically charged. Heretofore, they assumed in the field of science that all uh, molecular structures were held together by the electromagnetic attraction force. Well, we had shown, in fact, that there is an electrical attraction force, Q and Q prime, that actually is formed between the unlike atoms. This electrical attraction force is now called, in the field of science, electrovalent bonding. You know, the scientific world likes to be able to put names to uh, phenomena. And that electrical attraction force that holds the unlike atoms is equal to the two shared negative electrons uh, that the oxygen atom uh, has now accepted from the hydrogen atoms under law of physics that for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. So it became very apparent from this discovery that if we would expose the water molecule to opposite voltage potentials of electrical stress and shut off the flow of amps opposite from that of an electrolysis process, we could simply now cause the water molecule to uh, be pulled apart. And this was very well established by Coulomb's law and Newton's law of a sec uh, Newton second law of electrical force that whenever you expose an electrically charged particle to a voltage of opposite polarity, you will cause that electrical charged particle to go into a movement. So in other words, if I would create a positive voltage field, would not the negative charged electron be uh, attracted to the positive voltage field on the law of physics that opposite charges will what? Attract. And if I set up a negative voltage charge on the opposite side, would I not now have a repelling action that like charges will repel? And so therefore, in a little electronic circuit, you can set up electrical attraction force of opposite polarity, and we discovered we could simply pull apart the water molecule in a physical manner, simply by causing the positive charge hydrogen atom to be attracted to the negative voltage plate, and at the same time, the negative charge oxygen atom be attracted to the positive voltage field. Three things occur simultaneously at pulling apart the water molecule in a physical manner. Uh, number one, you have the elongation of the water molecule. As the water molecule uh, is elongated, then you have what is called changing the time share rate of the electrons, which causes a switch off of the electrons by the native intelligence of the hydrogen atom, says that I want to maintain as an atom. And then you have what is called covalent switch off. Well, Murphy's Law come into existence. Uh, can you check to see if I can uh, move the slide? Anybody know about Murphy's Law? Whatever go wrong will go wrong. So when Murphy shows up, then it's, uh, it becomes a blessing. Now, in this particular case, we are transferring the electrical stress from the molecular structure of water and applying electrical stress across the combustible gas atoms of the water molecule and what actually happens is that since the nuclei is positive electrical charge, it would migrate now to the negative voltage field. And the negative charged electron is now being migrated to the positive voltage field. And therefore, we are now starting to elongate the atoms of the water molecule. We're putting electrical stress on the combustible gas atoms. Therefore, we are slowing down the spin velocity of the electron. And under the electromagnetic theory of magnetism says, that whenever an electrically charged particle passes through an electric static field, its byproduct is electromagnetic energy. 
So the strength of the electromagnetic field of the atom is directly related to the spin velocity of the electron. So when I put an opposite electrical charge of, and create this opposite electrical stress onto the atom, then I slow down the spin velocity, therefore the electromagnetic field strength of the atom becomes weakened. Now there are four forces that affect an atom. There is electrical force, electromagnetic force, weak and strong nuclear force, and gravity. What force affects all the others? Electrical force. So it became obvious that the electrical polarization process, the Lord had me develop the VIC circuit using the dielectric value of water as part of the electronic component of the circuit. I put two resonant coils on either side of the capacitor, which is formed by two voltage zones and the, the dielectric liquid of water, and therefore became a, a tuned uh, pulsing circuit. And when you adjust it into the dielectric value of water, you are now allowing the voltage across uh, the two voltage zones to cause the electrical polarization to separate the water molecule in a strictly physical manner. You do not consume voltage in an electronic circuit. You restricting the current flow, therefore, you now have a very economic way of releasing the hydrogen and oxygen from water economically. And this is another illustration of the circuit. We are parallel and uh, we're now by wiring the resonant coils to give it an enhancement of amp restriction to allow the voltage to perform the work. We went through the system engineering. We found out that as you raise the voltage higher, then there were higher, uh, more gas was being generated, not on a linear effect as to the electrolysis process. We found out that the electrical polarization process occurs in all forms of natural water, even the most purest form of distilled water. Now the technology of using water as fuel was actually invented and developed through the eyes of a businessman. Under the law of economics, the guy who comes with the cheapest way is going to win out. You know, there's a lot of cat-like ideas that come in existence, but they don't comply to the law of economics, so they really never really get out the door. And it was also developed under the KISS method. Anybody know what the KISS method is? Keep it simple, stupid, don't make it complicated. Now, when I started back in the, in the late 70s, I couldn't go to any textbooks uh, to show these things, but the discoveries are quite simple. But once the realization of the mechanism was there, then it became quite obvious that water was a fantastic fuel source. Here's where we're increasing the voltage to higher to start to cause the water molecules to go into an ionization state, much like that of uh, fluorescent tubes. Now we got into a very interesting part, is that when you tune into the dielectric value of water, you go into atomic resonance, which I will talk about, which now propagated a uh, release of energy to cause uh, in a, in a magnitude of increase of hydrogen gas production way over the prior state of the art of the electrolysis process. Next of the invention was learn how to adjust the burn rate of the hydrogen and oxygen gases. Uh, normally when you combust hydrogen and oxygen, uh, the burn rate is around 325 centimeters a second. But in order to adjust the burn rate to co-equal that of the fossil fuels, if I'm able to do this and accomplish it, then I would have a retrofit system that we can retrofit to every internal combustion engine uh, in existence and therefore maintain the economies of the world. Uh, this shows a hydrogen and oxygen flame that's being adjusted to around 37 centimeters a second. Most generally, if you remember in your high school chemistry days when you light the gas, it would go poof. It's burning at 325 centimeters a second yet you're igniting the gas and the flame is being sustained and maintained from ordinary natural water at a temperature well over 5,000 degrees plus. In order to do this, there's a characteristic of water that water is also like a sponge that will absorb ambient air. And uh, the natural waters around the world will have anywhere from uh, 9 to 11 percent of ambient air. The bulk of ambient air composed of non-combustible gases like uh, nitrogen and argon and the other gases. And as a result, when you pull apart the water molecule from water, you're also releasing the ambient air with non-combustible gases. And so it's a multi-gas generator, and it automatically adjusts the burn rate down to around 47 centimeters a second. So we're now using the water as a gas mixing regulator. Now, if I'm using the water as a gas mixing regulator, does it cost me anything? Now, so far, under the law of economics, uh, if I'm using ordinary rainwater, I don't process the water in any way. I don't add any chemicals in, uh, into the water. Does it cost me anything? The political system has been trying to find ways of how to tax rainwater. And of course, I'm not 
interested to, to get in that discussion with them. Second, the voltage zones are composed of stainless steel materials, which is chemically entered to the process. So under lab actual certification testing, the longevity is like 0 0.0001 per year. So uh, if any of you people live for about 10,000 years, come back and tell me. Uh, but normally you would not have to replace the voltage zones. So I'm still complying with the law of economics, right? If I'm restricting current flow down to minimum and raising voltage higher, well then, is it cost me very much of electrical power in order to split the water molecule? Now this, is, this does not create energy. The only thing we're doing is developing the abilities to release the energy from water. Now we found the ability to adjust the hydrogen burn rate uh, to any burning level from um, fossil fuels all on down to burning leaves and paper. We developed now the ability for anti-spark back by using the mixture of the gas with non-combustible gases. Uh, that somewhere along the line in that tube, which we call a quenching circuit, uh, the non-combustible gas separates the hydrogen and oxygen gases, and as a result, if you terminate the gas generation, there's no spark ignition going back into the resident cavity. And you have that spark uh, arrestor, uh, irregardless of gas pressure or volume. This gives you an example of the burn rate, to understand it. If I put a hydrogen and ambient air into it and, and ignited one in, uh, the rate of burn is roughly around 325 centimeters a second. If I put a, a natural gas and ambient air in it, ignite the gas, it burns around 47 centimeters a second. So it became very obvious that if I now would mix uh, the hydrogen and oxygen gas with non-combustible gases that do not support the burning process, then I can adjust the burn rate of the hydrogen gas to go equal that of the fossil fuels. That was the number one major invention that allowed us now to go ahead and retrofit to any internal combustion engine or any device that's absolutely been running on fossil fuel, we now have a very economical way of doing this with uh, using ordinary water. Now the by byproduct of burning water, anybody know? Water. Is water. And as a result of that, automatically in doing this, we're solving the, uh, the environmental pollution problem. If you're running a car on water, as an example, you're no longer putting the chemical oxides in the air uh, from the byproduct of burning the fossil fuels. Uh, that water mist uh, being expelled out of, out of the system is environmentally safe. We had to be able to adjust the burn rate uh, lower than the 5,000 degrees that shows on the videotape. You have to get a little practical about this because if you put that type of uh, flame on the stove uh, and, the, and your wife decides, I want to do some cooking, but you burn holes in her pots and pans, I'm afraid uh, the cell job will be a little bit harder. So you have to be uh, practical about it. So that learned us uh, the abilities to adjust the burn rate. Now that gave us the abilities to develop the technology of running an internal combustion engine off of water. Uh, as an engineer, you look at the engine in three ways. 